Yeah. So, so we can start now. Right, what we're making now is monster squid hook baits, yeah? yeah? So we want nice buoyant hook baits, yeah? What aren't too buoyant that you don't need to use massive shots and massive weights to sink them. So we're making some nice pop-ups. Pop if we just use the pop-up mix on its own, it's too buoyant at 20 yeah. millimetres. It just goes bang up to the top, you can't hold it down easily. And your rig sits like this, it doesn't act natural at all. So mixing the pop-up mix with the S mix squid all season, 50-50, it acts, the squid acts as a counterbalance yeah. with the pop-up mix. And so it just makes a, just a better presentation. Yeah. If you was using, say, just making 10 mil pop-ups up, you'd be wanting to use this on its own. Yeah. If you were making 15 mil pop-ups, it'd be two parts of this to one part of that. Yeah. It's and the 20, way 20 the mils, balance. Yeah, 20 mils is about 50-50. But it just makes... And you want to make sure it's well mixed as well. Yeah. This way as well, every one of your boilies, what you make with a bait gun and a rolling table, will be exactly the same buoyancy. Yeah. So if you just change your bait, you don't have to look too much at your rig and everything else. You can get everything just balanced on every up bait you make. So what, what we're going to do... Just going to make a two egg mix. Because that'll make a lot of hook baits. Yeah. Direct for hook baits, a lot of hook baits. Yeah. Because we're going to boil them slower and a little bit longer than what you would do a bottom bait, we're going to use more flavour than what you would do. Yeah. Normally with this, it's 15 mill millilitres per four egg mix for bottom baits, but we're going to use 20 mil just for two eggs for pop ups. We're going to boil yeah. them a little bit more, but we want them stronger, we want them to stand out in your yeah. swim. And this is a handy little measure. So this is that's 20, 20 mil. Milliliters. Yeah. For two eggs. For hook yeah. baits. For hook baits only. Well, we're going to make them orange. Now we have black monster squid, purple monster squid soon, and red monster squid. And we want our hook baits to stand out. So we've got more flavour. We're going to make a different colour. Yeah. And yeah. You you think that colour really? Uh, plays the role for the cup. It makes a massive difference. Some days, if you use mixed boilies, some days you catch all on the red, another day you catch all on the yellow. Yeah. It can make a massive difference. White is a really good colour when it's cold because their eyesight ain't so good because yeah. they're cold-blooded, everything slows down. Yeah. So and the, uh, the, the dyes that you use is only for colour and does it have any nutrition on it? Uh, this has no nutritional value, the, the orange. Uh, the black has some nutritional values and it also has a filtration type value yeah. which stops some of the flavours coming out so quickly from the boilies and so it, it changes the flavour and the actual attraction of the boiler. It alters the bait a little bit. Yeah. But we've been selling Scopet squid now for nearly 30 years and everybody still catches lots of fish on it because we slightly alter it. Over the years we slightly made slight alterations. Yeah. Some that we didn't want to make well, at one point we used to use a certain yeast which we can't buy no more, yeah. they don't make it no more so we had to use a different yeast and it slightly, very slightly altered the boilie yeah. but by that small alteration it takes away the danger from the fish and so the fish carry on eating it yeah. if we use it exactly the same forever, it wouldn't last forever because we scare the fish yeah. away from it that's why from time to time the, the bait changes that's why it has changed we've always been honest about it but when we changed the scabbit squid one time we called it scabbit squid plus yeah. And that's when we added the tiger nut meal. Yeah. Because yeah. my friend was catching a lot of fish with tiger nut meal in his scopet squid. So it's never something that we alter by pure chance or or just, just without testing. Quite often any alteration and nearly well every bait what you see from Nash has been probably used for five, six, seven years on different waters in in testing. Yeah. We don't just invent recipes. Yes. Yeah? But like on the old labels, you'll see there's recipes on the on the bottles. Yeah. Some of the, all of them recipes come out of my recipe book from all my friends and field testers. What they've caught a lot of fish on. Yeah. It wasn't made up. But like all this information comes together. Now you can give me a flavour, 
you can say, Gary, can you blend that with three or four or five things and make a good recipe? And I could just do it like that. Yeah. It's, an e it's easy. Yeah. It's easier than feeding the baby, which yeah, I wouldn't know how to do. Big, does it, uh, big does spoon. it have any smell or taste? No, no this, is, this is very neutral. No smell, no taste. Uh, it's, a, it's a pigment type dye, so it's not really water soluble. Yeah. So it, shouldn't, it doesn't wash out a lot. Uh, same with the purple, that's a pigment type dye, so it doesn't wash out a lot. And the purple will hold some of the flavour back, but not as much as the black. Yeah. yeah. So you've got the red, monster squid red with the robin red. You've got the monster squid black with that carbon uh, filtration type system inside it. And then you've got the purple with no robin red, and again, different, because it's got no robin red. Yeah. And the purple coming out and the colour being different. Yeah. So you've got three totally different baits. Really, it's rushing it. Then three different baits could have lasted two or three years each, yeah. not just one year like we're doing it. So it's rushing it a little bit, but it's giving everybody the edge, the quicker edge. Yeah. You know, it's giving the edge, giving you the edge that my field testers usually get. Yeah. And my field testers have really do have the edge because they're using baits what have never been used before. So the customer wins this time. We want it nice and bright. So only two eggs. We're putting a lot of dye in. Yeah. This is not like the soluble dyes. The soluble dyes, because they dissolve into the water and bloom, you only need a tiny little touch. But with the uh, fluorescent type dyes, you need a lot. Yeah. You want to mix that well up. Because you need to, because it be the pigment, it's not dissolving into the egg, you need to distribute that dye. Yeah. Then we add the base mix. Always add the base mix, a reasonable lump to start with, until you get a nice sticky dough. When it gets right, it starts to fall off your fingers easier. Yeah. So the, the the right the right thickness of the, the the paste is when it goes out of your hand but still yeah. I'll tell you I'll tell you a good 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 way of knowing it stops sticking to the bucket yeah so it's ready then you know it's nearly ready when it stops sticking to the bucket you know it's getting there See, this is now a little bit too soft, but it's really been well worked. You see that orange is all the way through it. The flavours will be distributed all the yeah. way through it. It has to be blended. It has to be well mixed. Yeah, we use dough mixes at work, which mix miles more efficient than by hand. Yeah. Like we can't, we can't make a gritty uh, bird food mix, for instance, because yeah. the dough mixer bashes all the grit and all the texture out into just a smooth paste. Yeah. You see that with the uh, white chocolate boilers. You break them open and there's no, no texture. It's almost the same as the others. Yeah, it's got 20% bird food in it. Yeah. But you wouldn't think so. You think it's no. just a... It looks like a, a smooth paste. Yeah. So that's a shame, really, that we lose that texture. But, but isn't it? The texture really? is for the angler. Yeah. Not really for the fish. The fish just want something what they can eat fairly easily. This is now going to be just about correct when we've got this mixed in. You have a piece of eggshell. Yeah. <laughs> I've asked people ask me to put the whole, all the egg in, including the shell, yeah? When I make my own boilers, I make a lot of square boilers, and they don't like the sharp corners. So any, any idea I know, why? I think just because they don't they feel it and they don't like it, yeah? We have sensitive so, mouths. Yeah, so if you leave the eggshell in, there's too much that they don't like. This so, is something that Polish English likes really, really much. Yeah. Uh, the shelves yeah. and the boilers. Catch less carp, definitely. Yeah. yeah? Some people in England used to put oyster shell in the boilers. No more. They didn't realise the catch less carp. Yeah. And I, I heard something about the crunch effect. That yeah, the crunch, you can get the crunch effect. I've got 
whole egg, I've got eggshell uh, fine down to finer than sand, finer than fine sand. Yeah. You put that in a boil and you definitely get the crunch effect. Mm -hmm. But like, when we've tried it, it doesn't really catch any more fish. Yeah. There's no difference. So it's almost not worth it, is it? Yeah, we're going to put something in like eggshell. Like, in, a, in every one of our boilers, there's food, yeah? I tested lots and lots of ingredients on the fish, yeah, and worked out the ones what they like to eat the most. Because when you think about it, a, something as small as that hasn't got room for something they don't want to eat. So I'm only I only use ingredients what they like to eat the most. Yeah. For instance, I only use whole egg powder. I don't I use egg albumin because they just don't respond to egg albumin. Yeah. But whole egg powder, they love it. So I thought it'd be really crafty and use uh, egg yolk powder. But they didn't even like that. It's too fatty. They like the whole egg, but not the albumin end or not the yolk end. They like the together. Yeah, they like the complete package. It's all just testing things, testing and testing. Yeah, we, we and had the, a and listen to the fish, listen to see the reactions yeah. when it catches. That, that, that was interesting for us to see that you, we really tested the, for example, most of squid purple. Yeah, everybody thought that testing is just a, just you know. Just something that the bait companies said they, they do, do. Yeah, but yeah. they don't. Actually, yeah. we saw that we do. <laughs> yeah. Now you've got to test everything. And the only answer really is what the fish give you on bites and catching fish. Because yeah. like I've got fish at home and I feed them, but my fish at home will eat almost anything. <laughs> yeah, because they're used to it. But you can see, if you watch them careful, given two or three different things on the same day, you can see they have preferences. Yeah. And like so, initially I just. If my fish won't eat it, it'll be used as a debate. But if you're given two or three different things and you notice that they have a preference, then you know, you're going to catch more fish on something that they like a bit more than more. something else. But the very interesting fishing tanks are, the fishing ponds, I fed my fish for half a year with scabbit squid. Yeah? They loved it, loved it. Grew well, got big and fat and solid. One time I mixed a little bit of monster pursuit in with a scabbit squid and they picked the monster pursuit out. They just had enough of being fed every day on scabbit squid. Yeah. You know, a few days later, it made no difference, but the first few days, they picked the monster pursuit out. It's just interesting. Just dead interesting, yeah. Just can't get enough of the, how interesting it is. That's about the right consistency. Yeah. You won't stick to your finger, but it's still soft. Yeah. I had uh, massive problems with uh, with boiling gun and uh, with paste, always too stiff. Yeah, we do it too Sticky stiff. But stiff. You get holes in the boilers. Yeah. Yeah. Too 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 big hole in the uh, nose. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, really could do with that smaller. Okay, but we know if if we yeah. if, if we had a smaller hole, we'll, we'll be good. Book it. Yeah, book it there. For hook baits, yeah, always I finish off hand rolling. Why? I use the bait gun to make every size the same. Yeah. And finish off hand rolling. It makes a harder body. Yeah. Yeah? Compresses more. It compresses a lot more. Do it three at a time? Yes. That's years of practice? <laughs> uh, I yes. barely can do one at a time. <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> you do it. That's quick. Yeah. How many bodies you can do with your hands a day, for example? In a day, 40, 50 kilos. With a hand? Yeah. It makes my shoulder hurt. <laughs> so there's more <laughs> than, than me in a week with a boiling table. Yeah. Rolling table. Why you use the base mix in the bucket? It just stops all the boilers sticking together. And it starts to dry the outside out a little bit so you don't squash them. Yeah. Yeah, so they don't get flat pieces. And just, just easier to handle them. Yeah. 
makes a big mess in the pan. And some sort of uh, base mixes are so hard that it's hard to, to push it on a gun. Yeah. Is it the, the, the bad mix or uh, can you do something about it? When you it's could do hard? something about it. Like the Amber Tractor, for instance, is not the easiest mix to hand roll. It just isn't. It's not even easy to add machine roll. But like it's got terrific nutritional value. The carp absolutely love it. And I'm re reluctant to change it. When you mix that, like we're standing about a little bit here, with the Amber Tractor, you, you mix it, get the pace right, you don't talk to anybody, just do it. Yeah. That's all you can do. Yeah. The telephone goes, ignore it, just get it rolled. Yeah. But with this, this is an easy one to roll. And when, when you have the hard, the hard pace, hard to, 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 you know, to squeeze out of the gun, yeah. can you do something with the, the, the bad mix, that is too hard? If it's because you've done the mix wrong, yeah, you can wet it. Wet, wet it, it with water. With water. Get it sticky again, then bring it back to the right consistency with powder, with base yeah. mix. So more water but than, than egg? Not egg. Yeah. Egg just makes a night mess of it. Yeah. Hook baits do always take me longer. <laughs> You're quite, quite, quite fast one with the three at the one. Well, I've made so many over the years, and I, like fall, I used to make all my hook baits, all the hook baits up for my friends. And sometimes you think I don't want to do this; I just want to go fishing. But like, when you've got to make them up for friends and things like that, that end up around as what mine do. <laughs> But like, you just have to make them, don't you? Just to get on with it. Like if the wife told you to cut the grass, you just cut the grass, don't you? <laughs> it's easier. Yeah. When it's really, really cold, you can also put a little bit of extra sweetener in, that makes a difference. It's like they have a sweet tooth in the, in the winter, but really what it is, is they can't detect things so easy, so the blaster with sweetness makes a massive difference. But me and my, uh, quite a few of my friends, if we fish maggots or any other, anything like that for any species really, we flavour the maggots up, and uh, mostly with scope bags, and when it's cold, we put probably a 25% sweetener to 70 and 75% scopex. When it gets warmer, we only put sort of like 20% sweetener. So we cut the sweetener down a little bit. Yeah. And do you think there's stronger, stronger smelling baits with more uh, uh, liquid flavor uh, is better or worse in a, in a? In the winter, in the winter, they, they need to be able to find it, yeah. and like they, they senses aren't so good, so you better to make it a little bit flavoursome. Like my friend always used uh, frozen boilies and it upset him greatly when he caught more on shelf life boilies which have got a little bit more flavour, a little bit more sweetener in than frozen baits in the winter. It really upset him. He was yeah. like proper old school, only used frozen boilies. Yeah. Yeah. And he changed his mind because he caught more fish on the shelf life. Yeah. And then in the spring, less? Yeah, in the spring cut it down a little bit, probably change it a little bit. Yeah, if you're making your own baits, uh, you're a little bit silly really to make what you can buy off the shelf. Yeah. So if you're making your own baits in the, in the summer, when it gets warm, add a little bit more liver oil. You know, something that works really well in the summer, a little bit more shelf sense peel or something like, yeah, something so like that. So oily stuff in the summer? Yeah, then. yeah. So, so your bait is, if you're making monster squid up, yeah, using the top rod formula you know, for yourself, Cut, cut the amount of monster squid down, say it should be 50 mil, cut that down to 10 mil or 12 mil and add 3 mil of extra liver oil yeah. or 2 mil of extra shellfish sense peel. Make your bait more for the summer. In the winter, if you're using the monster squid again, like I say, add a little bit more sweetener, a little bit more flavour, but if you want to, add a little bit more scopex. Yeah. You know, and just make it more individual to you. 
because that that way everybody else. You've got different. Well, everybody throwing monsters, monster squid in, is baiting up for you. Yeah. And you've got the edge. Yeah. You've got the little tickle. Yeah. So use it to your advantage. Some people, like I know people what make their own baits that won't use a bait what everybody else can buy. Won't use a bit of squid or won't use monster pursuit. Christ, if you're good at making your own baits up, alter it slightly and use everybody else's baiting up to your advantage. Yeah. It's a lot cheaper. What I like to do with the waste, because I don't believe in waste with bait. <laughs> Had to go into all this effort. <laughs> They make a lot of smaller boilies. Now, I said to you earlier, who uses two pop-ups on a rig? Yeah. Everybody only uses one. You know, I, I caught two-tone, first 60-pound carp ever to be caught in England on two pop-ups, you know, double pop-up. It's a great big mouth. I fished it eight inches off the bottom. Well, like, just here's good for 20s, just here's good for 30s. I wanted a 60 pounder, so I was up here, because his body is so much bigger. And I feel this in, in places like Holland and uh, Poland and Europe, or all these big fish waters. Sometimes we read too many magazines and we fish small fish methods for big fish. Yeah. And you see the magazines, they'll have a step-by-step -step out to tie so and such a rig. And it'll have a photograph of quite a small fish with the angler, because they've gone onto an easy water to do the feature. Yeah. And he's done well on that easy water, because it's put, it's an easy walk with small fish. We want big ones. So yeah, I think you've got to adapt your rig and your height of your pop-up and things like that to catch the bigger fish. Yeah. Me and my wife, when we fished one time in France, we did this with bait as well. And the scope bit squid, the average weight was 31 pounds. The monster pursuit, the average weight was 34 pounds. So, and that was like catching a fish every hour, hour and a half. <laughs> That's just, true. Oh, mate, it's man mental. We moved away from the fish in the end. <laughs> We'd had enough. We didn't want to catch any more. Yeah. See, that particular water had done a 70 pound carp. So we weren't going to catch it when we were sort of surrounded by 30s. Yeah. So we moved swims. When you move, swim to get rid of the 40s, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that is a good trip. Yeah. <laughs> you've got to make your mind up what you want to catch. And if it's big fish, you've got to fish with big fish. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Like with the baits, for example, there is a classic range yeah. and the topper range, and the topper yeah. is more, more for the big fish because it, it doesn't attract as much small fish as yeah. the sand. Yeah. What I use the classic range for is tricks. Yeah. But like my favourite is scopex squid. Plenty of that thrown into the swim with normal scopex ready mates as a hook bait. That's caught me a lot of good fish. You use it for tricks, like we've got an orange bully here, it's going to be a trick. It's also got the flavours and everything of the free offering, so you've got the attraction in it, and you're feeding that attraction, and you're building the confidence of the carport. If he eats a freebie, a free boilie, and then comes across this, it smells the same, bang, you've caught it. Yeah. But like, it's just sort of like, odds are, and the hope is that he'll come and he'll see this and smell this quicker, eat that before the other free offerings are gone, so your swim lasts longer because you've still got free offerings in, yeah. and you've still got fish feeding. So you catch more fish by using little tricks. And that's the real reason for it. On the very hard waters in England, yeah, you fish a pop-up off the bottom for the first 24 hours of your fish, fishing, and then all of a sudden it goes really quiet because it takes sometimes 24 hours for them on the hard water in England to start eating the bottom baits. So your pop-ups here, and they're in your swim still eating the bottom baits. My friend fishes Elsto uh, number one and catches a lot of fish by using the pop-ups the first 24 hours and bottom baits only the yeah. second 24 hours. First for the fish that don't yeah. eat at the bottom. Yeah. And yeah. then when they eat everything on the bottom, you can yeah. drop off the, 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 yeah. the pop-ups. Yeah. yeah, fish for them there. You forgot to put the gas on again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's great, it's great, great. great. It's good? Yeah, very good. And we we managed to you managed to, to say something about the difference between the top rod and the classic yeah. range. Yeah. Because people yeah. don't understand. This. They no. think this, this is the uh, yeah. you know cheaper range. That's the, that's what they think. And like yeah, you know, I have many friends who catch a lot of big fish on on the cheaper range. Yeah. Yeah. It's only like 
like, yeah, there's people selling pellets and tiger nuts and things like that here. If you fish over a period of a couple of three years, the boilies will catch the most big fish without a shadow of doubt, yeah? But in the interim, in this period leading up to that, you've got the boilies and the pellets, they'll all be as good as each other, but the boilies will eventually come out on top, 100%, every time. More nutrition in it? Pardon? Maybe more nutrition in it? Yeah, more nutrition, the carp recognise the good food, yeah? It's uh, more resistant to nuisance fish, like on the Ebo, for instance, the roach and everything eats your pellet. So half the time you've got no pellet in your swim anyway. Yeah. Yeah, these, some of the catfish people only use pellets, yeah? And they don't catch anything in the morning. When we set up in the morning, we catch catfish spewing boilies out, spitting boilies out, because we've got bait all night and yeah. all, you know, all the day yeah. and all the next night. Yeah. So when we start in the morning, we're already starting on feeding fish. They don't catch anything first thing in the morning very often because they haven't got no food left. No. They start again. They should buy more uh, through the night. Well, yeah, put more boilies or put or bait more regular, yeah. yeah. See, the problem is on the Evo, you're not allowed in the boat after midnight. Yeah. So you've got midnight till 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning when you start fishing again, nothing's being replenished. So, so you need to, to put some more bait? You need to put something like lasts, yeah. boilies. Yeah. yeah, it makes a massive difference. We, get, we, get, we do well. Like, bearing in mind, we don't go guided or anything like that, yeah. we do it ourselves. Yeah, we do well when we go to the Evo, we catch a lot of fish. And the same as when we use a lot of solubles, yeah. because solubles are going, you know, yeah. spreading everywhere. Yeah. It's not a pellet, yeah. it's a soluble bait, yeah. and it's not going to make itself <coughs> bigger and yeah. then be eaten by the roach, for example, yeah. but it's yeah. going spreading more and yeah. more and more because yeah. it's like some, ash. Some, some, yeah, some places, yeah, the pellet all is a good thing to use with the boilies. Yeah, like I was, I prepared a, uh, some slides, some photographs for you. And you'll see that I'm using pellets and boilies together, and it follows on with catfish and carp on the Evo, because that's how we catch them there. Yeah. Uh, you'll see I've got some photos of p a particle, like a mixed blend of particle, and pellets and things like that together, followed on with one of the kids that works for me, catching lots of carp from my day to get like. Then it goes on to boilies, when he puts more boilies in his park, in his spot mix, and he catches more bigger fish and catches one of the thirties. It makes a difference. It makes a difference, and that's all in just a twenty-four hour, se a forty-eight hour session. Yeah. You can see the difference. So you need the, the water to boil really hard. Yeah, but with pop-ups, it's a little bit too hard. Yeah. You need to cook them slower. But normally, the the more it boils, it's better. For bottom baits, yeah. 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 There's a trick for cooling it down quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Normally I have a sieve, so yeah. I don't get the powder in. It's messy. It's messy, but it's good. Pop ups. The bigger pop up take longer to cook than a small pop up. Yeah. So, so we'll add these to it halfway through. Yeah. And how do you know where it's cooked? Uh, normally I take one out, cut it in half, and if it's cooked all the way through, it's got good texture all the way through, then it's finished. Yeah. So yeah. no paste in, in the middle? No, no paste in the middle. People say, oh, I like to cook it with a lot of heat. Yeah. All right, with the bottom bait, that's good. It doesn't really matter. I don't even like to cook them with a lot of meat with the bottom bait. I like to cook them all the way through. And many bait companies suggest that you only just skin the boilie, just cook it for a few seconds, things like that. Cooked ingredients are more digestible than uncooked ingredients. Yeah. That's with carp, that's with dogs, cats, us, yeah? You know, we eat cooked food and digest cooked food easier than what we digest raw food. So. It's what you might lose. You might lose some of the nutrition, but you're gaining nutrition. The fact that you turn it into edible food. Yeah. Yeah. So I have no problem with cooking for longer periods, yeah. but a lot of bait companies do. 
The only way to really destroy a bait is if a bait has got a lot of enzymes and the added amino acids and things like that. They are heat sensitive, so you've got to be careful with them. But like, you're better off using them with dips and things like that anyway, because the cooking's not going to do them much good in the, in the first place. Yeah. Although we are working on that. There's different enzymes, what's the heat stable and... That's for future. Yeah, that's for future. Yeah. That means everybody has to go to the lake and test the pH first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See if the bait will work. <laughs> We'll add the little gems. So a small one, sh sh uh, you cook sugar? Yeah. Uh, you, you don't have a lot of the, the, the dye in the water? No, because the, the, the dye is not soluble. Yeah. It won't go into the water. So here, here, get, that's clear one. Yeah, that's pretty clear. Let's get a clean glass. <laughs> no, that's not clean. Clean glass with <laughs> the dirty water. Look, this is this is a soluble dye. Yeah, the red one. This is the orange soluble orange. dye. Turn a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's just gone into the water. Yeah, so digestible, uh, sorry, soluble uh, dyes put less than the You pigment. put less, yeah. Was this or just Won't even mix yeah. with the water. Won't it even dissolve. Yeah. Somebody stole that knife. Yeah. Here. But you can, you can see, this is cooked. It's got a big lump of paste. It's cooked all the way through. Uh, you, this, yeah, this one doesn't no have paste. paste. No paste. The smaller one should have paste. No, the smaller one don't have. Yeah. So there's no paste in that. It's cooked all the way through. It's very hot. <laughs> it's going to be a... Yeah, it's yeah. very buoyant. It's also hot. But when they're hot, they're more buoyant anyway. Yeah. If you put them into cold water, it makes them hard again, even harder. Yeah, that's a nice trick. Yeah, or whole face, yeah. especially. There you go. They are really hard. Yeah. This smells nice. Just like muscle squid. Yeah. This is the same. Yeah. Just nice. a little bit stronger. Yeah. A lot stronger. Yeah. Nice. And nice some people put 50 or 60 mil of, of flavour into just a one egg mix of pop-ups. I see no reason whatsoever to do that. Most of it's locked inside, because your pop-up mix is denser than most body, body mixes. So it's locked inside, it's never going to come out. So it's only that one and a half to two mil of skin what you really want to be doing anything with. So you're better to add the arousers or to add, add the uh, top rod former to the outside of the skin. Leave it to soak in for a couple of days and then you can have a really strong pop-up. Yeah. If you make all your pop-ups at a reasonable level, then that gives you options to play even further. But if yeah. you put all that flavour inside the pop-up, you can't take it out again. Yeah. 
So if you're fishing with what's responding better to less flavour, because some of the odd waters in England respond better to less flavour. So if your pot's really high flavoured, you can't take it out. So you're going to catch less than the man what thinks like I do. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, so... And, uh, the, for example, when you when you do your own boilies with the base mixes, you have... Um, if, if you air dry this, it yeah. will be rock hard. Yeah. So how yeah. you do that... Uh, how you do that, the... the, 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 the shelf life's going to be like powder, yeah. Yeah. being yeah. Uh, That's, like ash. What's that? What's that? That's got, yeah, that's got uh, four parts egg to one part of another liquid similar to glycerin, which is like, you know, you use it in all your food flavors and things like that and use it in the animal feeds, yeah. Uh, when you dry the boilies, all the water from the egg is dried away. Yeah, eggs are about 60, 65% water. So you dry all the water away from the egg, even just solid egg, but you also leave that, that about 15, 10-15% of glycerin, yeah, still in the boilie, so it gives you the moistness. Yeah, so the moisture yeah. is not of the water, but of the, no. the liquid. No, all the water has to go. Yeah. Yeah, because glycerin and the products what we use for, as a preservative, and then it's not really preservatives, the mould inhibitors, nothing, no, the mould won't grow on them, but if we leave water, the mould will grow, so we have to take all the water away. Yeah. You could test it with our ready mades. If you get some of our ready mades, wet them, well wet them, yeah, leave them in a, in a, say in one of these jars, yeah, just just with a little bit of water, with the boilies still out of the water, just enough water to wet them, really wet them, they'll go off, rotten, they'll go off, they'll grow mould. So they're not really even shelf life, they're not even preserved. Yeah. They're actually just held back. And it can hold back forever, as long as you don't add water. Yeah. But if you add the water, because like, you know, they're made up by food. So they're just actually like, soft, but there is no water in it. Yeah. So it, yeah. it should be rock hard, yeah. but it has the yeah. moist of the, the, the liquid that you add yeah. with your eggs. Yeah. Clever. Yeah. Thank you. That's no all we, so, so this is all we want to know. Yeah. And yeah. hopefully that will help our watchers to catch more carp. Yeah, should do, should do. Re, re, homemade now all, they have to do, now all they have to do is learn to find where the fish are. Yeah. Because all this doesn't really matter unless you find the fish. Yeah. So thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Next time. <laughs>